Hello, my name is Dylan. I'll be working on your vehicle today. As far as that four wheel drive, uh, all formatic and up, um, I, the transfer case is, has a malfunction, so we're gonna ha go ahead and get that ordered. Bye bye, old friend. Welcome back, everyone, to kind of a bittersweet day. Hurricane Ian, or I guess here it was just a tropical storm, Ian has now gone past us. It's still a little bit gloomy and a little bit drizzly, and obviously some cold weather followed it because I'm wearing a hoodie. I mean, it's 65 degrees right now, but it feels cold after you come down from the 90s. But the reason that today is a bittersweet day is because the SOK is officially sold. I am driving to the storage unit right now to go get the car and give it a once over and give it its final goodbye. The new owner should be out here in a few days to come and pick it up. So I just wanna make sure that it doesn't need anything. Now the car is going to a family friend, so it's going to good hands. So like I mentioned in the previous video, there's a chance you'll see it again on the channel. But our journey with the SLK has officially ended. Once the SOK gets picked up, what's next? I'm not sure. Uh, there are many options. I could turn that money around and use it towards another project or another car, kind of leaning towards something Japanese for a change. Or I could put it towards the 190E and the engine swap. Or the third option, which is one that Lauren would probably most enjoy, is taking that money and putting it in the bank account and sitting on it for the time being. So we'll see. Once I have money in hand and the car is gone, I'll go from there and decide what I want to do. Well, that worked out nicely, huh? Here we go again, I guess. And the gate at my storage unit is tripping. I guess that's a casualty of the storm. Got her back home safely. Got a few things to go over. Check engine light and ABS light came on. I'm assuming it was from voltage or lack thereof. Having to jump it, we'll see. But look at all this all Mercedes setup we got here, huh? Okay, so on the agenda. One, it does have a trickle charger. That's what these little wires are here for and runs down here. But obviously I didn't have it hooked up, so it was dead. But there's a bunch of corrosion on the batteries. Gotta get that cleaned up. Like I said, there's a check engine light and ABS light that came out when I was driving, but I'm assuming it's from low voltage and having to jump it off. Other than that, everything else seems okay. I'm going to check the lights, lift it up, make sure there's no new oil leaks or anything, but the ground was dry. And we'll get it ready to go.
I'm not necessarily a behemoth of a man, but I am over six foot tall and I am over 200 pounds and this car feels claustrophobic when driving it. I have to see as far back as it will go and I still don't feel like I could go on a long journey with this car. He can rid of cars, man. So here it is, the SOK's final resting place after my drive before the new owner takes it. And like I said, it's a little bit sad, but I'm also very much looking forward to what the future holds. But the flip side of it is, it's also a very good condition, clean car, so turning it into a race car would kind of be a waste. In a couple of days, the new owner is going to take this car, going to drive it out of here, and I'll have to make a decision on what I want to do next. So now moving on to the GLC 63 and what that was all about. As you saw in the first clip, it was up on the rack at Mercedes and they were letting me know that the transfer case is failed on the car. Now, I may or may not have been a contributing factor to the failure. <laughs> Nothing I did with that car was not necessarily what it wasn't designed to do. Now I'm a little bit disappointed with Mercedes and the whole drivetrain thing. As far as I know, these are supposed to be bulletproof drivetrains and for what I did with the car for the transfer case to literally explode is a little bit weird to me. So here's the bill from Mercedes and essentially summing up the fact that the transfer case failed and exploded and needed to be replaced. Now, I was lucky enough that it was all covered by warranty. Otherwise, I'd be out, I don't know, seven grand or something like that. And obviously, it was down for a little bit. I had to leave with Mercedes for a week. So, as usual, Lauren had to drive the truck and the C63 did daily driver duties, which seems like it's doing it way too often, mostly because I am an idiot. But it's all fixed, all good to go. Luckily under warranty, I guess we'll have to slightly take it easy. Again, I'm a little bit disappointed in the fact that in such a new car, that it was built by AMG, that the transfer case decided to throw in the towel on me only after a few things. Now. Who's to say the previous owner, because we did buy this thing certified pre-owned, who's to say that the previous owner didn't do similar things with it, but either way, I guess that's what happens when you have two 95s and two 65s with sticky tires on a very heavy SUV with a whole bunch of horsepower out of a twin turbo V8. Now I want to apologize for the lack of content, it's been a very very busy last couple of weeks for me, so I just didn't even have time to edit the clips I have, I know some of them might be a little bit outdated, and then obviously with the GLC being down and at the dealer that delayed things a little bit more. A couple things I want to mention, the SOK did make it back to its new home, there were two things that kind of came up. One, I didn't mention what I did about the ABS fault. The ABS fault was pretty much from the steer angle sensor being out of calibration. And correcting that was as easy as just running the car and going lock to lock a few times till it recalibrated the steering position. Second thing, it threw a P0120 fault for the throttle pedal or throttle position and that's something it never did in the past. I wasn't sure what that was all about. It did it after sitting in storage before I sold it. So from my research, it turns out that the throttle position sensor in the throttle pedal itself is faulty when you get that fault. So I did send a new pedal to the new owner. I stood behind it because it's something that came up that was new, that didn't exist on the car. 
and I didn't want to be that guy selling a car with an issue. With it being gone, there are some things already at play uh, that will be revealed in the next video. Kind of excited, a little bit of a departure from what you've seen here right lately. So stick around for that one. And once again, thanks for watching.